And we are live. Starting stream. I love the okay. Voices there. Hi. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of the HOT Experts Roundtable. If you haven't already, please subscribe by hitting that red button and the notification bells. So you won't miss anything. And today we have on our panel Danny Bossa, Sam Cook, and Mike Coxis. How are you guys? Good. How are you, Stephen? Hi, guys. Good. Thank you. So these guys, together with many others, are in our closed and free Facebook group, TRT and Hormone Optimization Therapy, HOT. And if you are watching this, you surely must be interested. And if you haven't already, please join our group. The link you will find under the video. So first, we will have some prepared topics. And afterwards, we can take your questions from the Q&A live stream chat box. Um, if, you do, if you value the content that is brought on this channel, but we're doing it for free, of course, but if you want your question to be addressed and stand out for us, you can use the super chat option. That's a little dollar sign in the tie box, donate one dollar or something, and your question will appear on top of the chat box and really stand out. So uh, that's just a tip. And one more thing, these guys, as you probably know, are no medical doctors. Uh, we are only discussing these topics of TRT and hormone optimization from our own experience, study of the research and evidence-based knowledge. And we learn a lot from the doctors, of course, that we are working with and that also join our Facebook group regularly. So let's start, uh, guys, with some prepared questions. What advice uh, do you want to give to all the guys out there that have uh, obvious low testosterone symptoms, a borderline low testosterone value in the blood, but a GP, a general doctor who doesn't have a clue, uh, who doesn't know what optimizing hormones uh, means? Should they just uh, change docs uh, as soon as possible? But of course, that is not always possible. In some countries, uh, it isn't, uh, like in Holland. I don't know in the UK. Um, but uh, in some healthcare systems, you cannot just change uh, GP. So, uh, or should we just try to inform and educate these doctors? Uh, and if so, uh, how would you do this? Um, who wants to start? I'll start, Stephen. Um, in, in the UK, and uh, you know, we, we've noticed a lot of uh, clients that come to us, some of the doctor's patients who... Uh, get frustrated uh, after they spend time with their GP, maybe, uh, and then being escalated to endocrinology, only to be pushed back six to eight months later. Um, after waiting another six months just to get an endocrinology appointment, um, in the UK, everyone has the right uh, to have healthcare that's free at the point of care through the National Health Service, but um, they can also go private. And um, and that's that's the option that they can, they can do to leapfrog or just to kind of beat the time that they'd have to wait and, and suffer through with their symptoms. And um, that's something that, that we've been able to help lots of uh, patients and our clients with getting blood tests uh, sooner than they would have done on the NHS, getting the results and getting them to expert doctors to, um, to review and potentially diagnose them with uh, low testosterone. And I think like in the UK, like if you were to, um, or you're obviously within, within a certain sort of restricted healthcare service if you are trying to achieve sort of treatment there so you know is, is you can try and educate I mean you can try and say okay well you know I've got this evidence or I you know I've, I've got this what do you think about that you know if, even if some doctors are open and willing to sort of you know look at that and sort of take that on board they still may be restricted with regards to what they can do you know they've got certain guidelines um, they've got certain literally like flow charts for lots of different things within the NHS for, you know, if you come in with one, if you, like, you know, if it was a, a urine infection, let's try this antibiotic, you know, go on to the next thing, not on to the next thing. And if you were to deviate out of, out of that, you know, it can be frowned upon. So um, I think it has those restrictions as well, sort of within that, that health service. But again, if you go outside of that and actually try and find, you know, some doctors that actually know what they're doing, have experience in it. That's, I mean, that's the, probably the best option i would say in the uk i mean in, in america i'm sure like danny you could probably just swap doctors i mean i hear about guys doing that i mean is that is that more of the case i'm i'm in canada so i'm not oh, in, sorry, i'm man. not in sorry. america i'm in north america how dare you okay say yeah. yeah apologies um, apologies <laughs> it's it's definitely harder here than in the u.s um there's a lot more knowledgeable doctors there than here here they're very very difficult to come by I have not found a single doctor 
uh, anywhere in my area. And trust me, I've, I've looked that really knows how this stuff works. It's kind of like you said, uh, you know, about if you have this issue, prescribe this, and you have this issue, prescribe this, all your testosterone. Yeah, you're in range. You're good to go. Uh, I was ignored for years um, until I yeah. was able to learn enough and then justify my, my mentality to a doctor who happened to be open-minded enough to say, Hey, I, you know, I, I can't say, I know much about this stuff. I'd like to learn more about this stuff. So I just sent them videos and I sent them research and I sent them podcasts and he actually tried it on his, on his himself first. And when he tried it on himself and saw that how much better he was doing, he's like, wow, this is sure fantastic. Is. I'm going to start doing this on my patients. You know, he was uh, one doctor, doctor I was talking about, he was using uh, Chrysin or Chrysin. I don't know if it's pronounced, but it's supposedly a, a very mild um, aromatase inhibitor because he was convinced it had to be lowered a bit. He wouldn't use any of the Rimidex and, and um, Aramacin and stuff like that. But he had all of his patients on, on this uh, Chrysin stuff. And the ones that had a type of a cream, they were applying it anally, rectally. <laughs> and he had the Chrysin. Uh, in with the <laughs> with the cream so he's like yeah so i put some on and i just you know really sorry i didn't mean to do that to you guys but he's like <laughs> he's, i'm like you're literally shoving this stuff up your ass like you know there's a better way and i had to explain to him about the scroll application that that are you know anyway so i said look let's shove stuff up your bum like by all means it's like, good that, good there's a meaning to it though like to, con to consider that. that's quite good yeah so it's it's if if you're going to use a gp you gotta tell yourself that you're most likely going to get disappointed right off the bat because most of the general practitioners just aren't going to do this properly there are a select few that will there are a select few that are comfortable with it with the with the content enough that would know how to kind of get around things to make sure that you're okay typically like like mike and sam were saying you'd have to go private and people say, yeah, but that's going to cost me money. I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, all good things in life cost some amount of money. So, you know, if you're, you know, haven't been able to have sex with your wife in three years and she's about to leave you, you know, if you want to spend a couple bucks a month and get some cream and get that resolved, like that, that, that for me is logical. Um, uh, and typically, like we're saying uh, in a lot of the podcasts is your levels have to get quite a bit higher than what these clinical ranges are that get lowered year after year after year after year. And if you want to follow that range, you know, if the range used to go up to 1500 for total test and you were in range and now the next year it's down to 1400, are you going to lower your dose? Because now you're out of range. Let me lower my dose. And then two years later, now the dose, you know, the range gets lowered. Are you going to keep lowering your dose? Cause now the total test only goes up to about 900. So all you guys are on TRT for the longest time who consider yourself optimized, if you're going to follow these numbers, guess what? You're going to have to lower your dose and you're going to have to keep lowering it. To well, lower. where do you yeah, draw the line? That's a good point, Danny. And, um, <clears throat> you know, when I started on TRT, I think the high end of the range was like 12 to 1400 nanograms per deciliter. Um, but even then, the standard of care was not to get you at the high end of normal. It was right. just, just about in the low end of normal was considered um, appropriate, which, which is why I think some of the regulatory agencies like the FDA or MHRA would approve the low concentration gels that you would apply all over your abdomen, only getting levels in you know the 400 range, usually, and that's all they wanted it to, to be as far as the endpoints. So um, yeah, it's it's kind of um, a disappointment when you go through the more standard family practice or GP practitioner. Yeah, yeah, your levels were 180, and the range is you know, 280 now to 900. Oh, we got you to 400. Hey, you're in range. Be happy. Like, no. <laughs> this, this isn't doing anything. So. Okay. That was uh, very clear. Thanks for your opinion, guys. Um, what advice, that was the doctors. What advice would you give um, to other guys starting on the hormone optimization therapy, TRT, uh, in regards to their relationships? Uh, because I know some women are probably not open to the idea that their man starts taking hormone supplements, working out uh, suddenly, uh, starting to eat healthier maybe. They might think uh, he has some new or younger women in his uh, life, no? What's your opinion on that, uh, Mike? Yeah, we've come across this. I've, I've had conversations with some of our clients who were very much concerned that the partner, the girlfriend, wife didn't necessarily want them on, on this testosterone. They were very suspect of why they were doing it. 
Um, you know, these may have been men that may have previously been on uh, anabolic steroids. And so uh, they're fearful that now they're going to go back on that trend of what they were doing. And they kind of conflate the two things between, you know, medically supervised testosterone replacement treatment versus self-medicating uh, with, uh, with anabolic steroids. So we, you know, one of the things is you, you have to kind of push through. You, you have to realize that if it's okay for your female partner to have HRT, uh, to, to help through the symptoms of menopause, then you know, th why can't a man have TRT to help through the symptoms of andropause? And I know they're not quite the, on the same equivalency. Obviously, andropause is a bit of a, a, a trick or a kind of a play on words where you're, you're, you're not having a sudden period in your life where it just drops. But in, in reality, for a lot of men, they're doing fine, they're doing fine, and all of a sudden they don't have uh, the, the energy, the vigor, the, the beta they once had. And in some ways it, it can uh, be similar to menopause, other than you know, one is biologically pre-programmed and the other may happen for, for many reasons. So I say you've got to push through and, and, um, and really work and bring, bring your partner involved in, into, the, into the conversation uh, and, and to get their buy and help them understand and educate them that this is for your health and well-being and not just something for you to build muscles. Correct. Yeah, I think it's, uh, education was like the, the key thing you're saying there. I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's if, if, if as you should be educating yourself sort of before the process, you know, I think it's key to educate anyone close to you, whether it's a partner or, you know, someone you spend a lot of time with, anything like that, family, if you need to, um, you know, because I mean, it's it can be turned into a positive thing, right? You know, if you if you've got a lot of uh, symptoms, restrictions, uh, things that you know that are currently affected by your symptoms, you know, why why not you know get them involved in you know I'm going to have more energy to do the things that you know I like to do, and I know you like to do these things, and and this is what to expect. I mean, you know, there's a certain amount of anxiety starting through. TRT, I mean, we see it all the time, don't we? You know, the, the questions all the time. Could it be this? Could it be that that's happening? Could I, yeah. I feel like this? Could it, could it be this? And, you know, I, I think, you know, I know I was, you know, with my partner. I had to be like, look, this is a bit of a journey. You know, I've got to go through this. It's a, it's not an immediate switch either, right? It's not like a, you're just going to be tomorrow, you're, you're on TRT, so everything's awesome. It's a, it's a long game. You know, things like libido or things may take longer than, you know, energy for, for some people to come back. So, you know, I think it's actually maybe, maybe I'm going to be a bit more anxious. Maybe I'm going to be more aware of sort of what I'm doing for, for these next sort of, you know, six months to a year. Um, so I think education is key. You know, I, I did that with, with my partner. I said everything that I was reading about it, I was trying to explain. She probably got pretty bored by it by the end of it, but it definitely <laughs> helped when, when it sort of got into the process. And, and um, yeah, I, I think if somebody has, like Mike say, says, you know, history of sort of steroid use or anything like that, even more, even more so, you know, some of like the strong androgens and you know the way in which they utilize and things like that you know it can be it can affect some people in in ways where they're up and down and you know um, and act certainly fatigue sometimes things like that as well as obviously the the effects of the other steroids so yeah definitely explaining that it is about optimization it's medical treatment it's monitored um yeah i think that's key in uh in my case i started TRT after having met my current wife because I had every single thing imaginable. And when I first brought it up to her, it was like, oh, you're going to be taking steroids and what is this? And I don't know what it is. And I took the time to really go look for content online that we could watch together. I'm going to say, let's, let's, we're going to sit down. We're going to watch this video. And you tell me if this doesn't sound like me to a T. And I want to try this out because we're, it's ruining our relationship, which it absolutely was. Um, in regards to your, your spouse, you know, you, you can have a whole bunch of different issues. In my case, my, I had a spouse with a really great, you know, sex drive, and I didn't really have any. So obviously, getting my levels up to match hers was perfect. It worked out for the, for the best. Now, let's say she had a very, very low sex drive. You know, let's say I was a much older guy, and my wife was an older woman, and she hit menopause, and her, her hormones were a mess, and her, her, her libido tanked. Now we have two people that are no libido and I wish I had libido and I get my levels up. She might say, Oh no, now he's going to want sex. And I don't, you know, or maybe she's not even attracted yeah. to me or who the, who the hell knows. Um, so if you're both of them in the same boat, you're feeling better. And now you're realizing that your partner isn't there. You can say, listen, I feel so much better. Why don't we do this together? I assure you, you will feel so much better and just show them the female side of this whole process. Uh, I mean, there's, 
There's only benefits. You can't really go wrong with any of this stuff. Okay. Um, that was for the relationship uh, advice. What nutritional advice uh, could you give to men that just uh, start taking TRT? I guess a lot of them will get more and more energy and maybe they have to lose fat. So they certainly could use this to their uh, benefits advantage, uh, losing fat and building some muscle, uh, right? Mike, mm -hmm. what is the first yeah. thing uh, your, your dog say about nutrition? I, I think they're all in agreement that it's very important that you, um, you, you focus on your nutrition. One of my, um, my good friends, a psychiatrist in America, used to say um, testosterone and, and donuts don't mix. So you can't you know, eat poorly and expect to have uh, improvements necessarily. Uh, especially if you're one of these people that have some sort of um, you know, pre-diabetes conditions or metabolic syndrome, this is important for you, for people to kind of focus, um, kind of refocus now that they're, they're working on their hormone side of things and it complements it by working on nutrition. So we've had lots of uh, our clients that will, will start uh, changing some of the dietary patterns and, and even start, start going back to the gym uh, to kind of have more of a, a some way balanced approach, diet, exercise, and hormone balance. So, yeah, I think it's something that um, uh, is, is a very important step to take because it's about the self improvement, and, and that's the right time is when you uh, when you start on the treatment. I mean, the obviously, um, you know, like just parroting what Mike said there in, in terms of how important it is, and that that's what they, what they do mention to patients, but it's. Um, uh, you know, it, uh, it is again is a, is a long game, isn't it? TRT getting I said that earlier, but you know, it might not be easy for if your if your symptoms haven't resolved. Of you know, if you if you've got low mood, you know, anxiety, stress tolerance is still quite poor, you know, and and you've used food, you know, for a long time, sugar, things like that to sort of you know, and that was partly me as well. I think I had this experience where, you know, it was still it was hard just to begin to or if, if I was actually just to stop all of those things, you know, the transition, you know, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been easy. I don't think so. I think it's, I personally think when I speak, speak to guys that sort of go through it, I think the first part of TRT is like, like being kind to yourself. You know, I, I don't think if you treat like your, you know, if your body has been lacking hormones for such a long period of time and, and the body is maybe in a state of, you know, it's, it's not optimized. It, it may not be physically able as it, as it once was and things like that. I think, But also mentally, if you've been dealing with a lot of, you know, bad experiences because of anxiety or, or low mood or, or things like that and things you've avoided, you know, I think it's about, you know, get, get the hormones in, into the right place, go through that journey. Simple things like if you can just begin to cut down the sugar or like just remove sugar, you know, just, you know, they're not diets, are they? They're, it's trying to change how you eat sort of long term, really. Um, and, and what I have witnessed is some men get excited, you know, they're, They, they go on TRT and they've like, had their first application or they have their first injection and they're like, right, I'm now on a, on a strict <laughs> diet. So people just cut out like loads of food, real sort of caloric deficit and, and train like absolute, you know, absolute nails. They just go for it sort of, you know, five, six, seven days a week, no rest. And they burn out. So some guys get to like, yeah. you know, week six, week 12, and they've just trained solidly for like the last three months. So it's, and they're like, I don't know what's wrong with my TRT. Like I'm just absolutely knackered. You know, maybe I'm not optimized. It's like, well, what have you done in like the last year? You know, that should have been a graduate. You've not trained. Like maybe, maybe you knew how. That's the ones that have known how to train before as well. You know, they've had a, a good history of training. They know what to do when they can do it, and haven't been able to do it. And as soon as they're like, I'm going to be able to do it again. You know, they go from zero to to a hundred, and then just sort of sort of burn out. So I also think I truly think if you, if you enough food good food if you can begin to cut out sugar to, to begin with those are good sort of steps to begin with and i think long term as you feel better um you know as you start noticing changes i think the motivation will come and then you can probably get onto some sort of you know some lifestyle some you know and that's what it is really isn't it? it's not just it's changing your diet not being on a diet you know um that's what i think that's what i sort of i've witnessed agreed yeah sugar is the sugar is the biggest one guys you got to realize that You know, I talk to some guys on TRT and they're like, I've been on TRT for three months and I'm still miserable and I still have no sex drive and nothing works. And then you're looking at their labs and like, you know, free tea is good and everything seems to be, you know, this guy could be going through a nasty divorce. Maybe his business is suffering. He's about to declare bankruptcy. You know, maybe one of his kids on drugs, maybe, 
you know, his, his stress is keeping him up at night. This is not a magic potion that like, oh, I took an injection. Oh, I'm optimized and everything is great. It just doesn't work that way. Um, in regards to the diet stuff, I've, I look at it as you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if you have, you're on TRT and you're exercising, but your diet is shit, well, guess what? You're not going to expect much. If you have your, 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 your diet is really good and you're on TRT, but you're not exercising, well, guess what? You're, you, you're, there's only so much you can, you can do. I've, you know, I've done both. I was training really, really heavily throughout the whole period that I wasn't on TRT and the gains were like, I mean, they were kind of pathetic and I was eating really, really, really well. I wasn't on TRT. Uh, and, you know, then I, when I got on TRT and I started, you know, doing everything together, the, the difference is night and day. Um, I've gone now for the last year, not training uh, due to a whole bunch of reasons. I won't bore you with the details, but wasn't training, but I was on TRT and I was eating reasonably well and I've been staying reasonably healthy and, and lean and in shape. Um, I've got my home gym is going to be ready on Monday and I'm going to start training again. So it's going to be great to see like finally optimized tea diets and check and exercise what that's going to be like. That's going to be great. You know, if you guys are just trying to get lean, you know, by all means cut out the sugar to start. I know a guy that dropped 30 pounds just because he used to drink two or three Coca-Colas a day. Yeah. Cut off the Coca-Cola and he dropped 30 pounds. He says, I don't exercise. I still sit on my ass watching Netflix every night. I eat all the other junk. I just cut out the Coca-Cola. I just cut out the soft drinks, 30 pounds like that. Think a 30 pound weight that you're carrying around with you all the time. It's huge. You know, car uh, ketogenic diet. If you can, if you can muster it and stick with it, it's great. There's a lot of guys in the group that they're on their TRT is well and they're training, but they had issues. They realized they had gut issues. They tried the ketogenic, still had issues. Some of them even gone down to carnivore. This carnivore, it's being demonstrated that it causes no inflammation. Uh, you know, you eat just that, get your gut healed, and then slowly start reintroducing foods one at a time to figure out what's causing an issue. Um, I had a conversation with Eric Serrano at one point, and he asked me, he says, Benny, what food intolerances do you have? And I'm like, like, I eat everything. I don't have any intolerances. And he's laughing at me and laughing. He says, you have an intolerance. You just don't know what it is. Everybody has an intolerance. You know, so sometimes it's just finding what that intolerance is. Cut that one thing out and you're like, it's life changing. So, um, I mean, through my um, okay. thyroid issue that we, um, that I've, that I've had, it's been done kind of a Hashimoto's type of situation where it's autoimmune. And then I've had to remove uh, gluten and dairy from the diet. And I saw great decrease in, um, in body fat, um, lost about 11 kilos uh, as a result. So, you know, no milk, no dairy and, and no, no gluten, obviously I exercise as well and had thyroid support, but still um, I've tried uh, lower gluten and dairy before. Um, but when I had all three combined, it, it made a big difference having all the hormones in balance, plus the diet, plus the exercise. I know uh, somebody, a uh, fa family member, I will say who was family member, had narcolepsy, had depression, okay, clinically depressed. She had PCOS and she had, I uh, forget, something else. She was a disaster and she was on a ton of meds. Narcolepsy is basically where you're just talking, you just fall asleep, just out of the blue. She couldn't drive a car unless she's taking her meds. The depression was ruining her. The PCOS was ruining her. Um, acne all over their back and stuff like that. She realized it was gluten. She cut gluten and preservatives uh, out of her diet. And she's off all her meds. It literally took a week. A week later, she's like, I don't need these meds. And she's off. She's been off them ever since. And it's, she hasn't even the slightest bit of gluten. All those things come crashing back immediately. So guys, diet is like, it's huge. It's, it's the most important thing on the list. I would say diet... You know, exercise, TRT, or close second, but diet is probably going to be the number one. Do you think that guys that are really overweight should first lose weight uh, with their diet and exercise and then start uh, hormone optimization, or should they start at the same time? Same time. Yeah. I know it sounds like a chicken and an egg question, but um, it all kind of helps and supplements getting into the right goal. And sometimes it's that little fill-up that they need, the little push that they need to to start making these life changes um, by, by having starting with the hormones and then working on diet and exercise. It can make a big difference. Okay. A question that we get a lot in the group is um, when do men need to have their first blood control after starting TRT? 
Um, is there a set moment that you say, well, six weeks, uh, something? What is your opinion, uh, Mike? So our doctors like to have a blood test anywhere from uh, four weeks up to about 12 weeks. Um, usually the average is around six weeks, maybe closer to eight weeks. And then we've been through our balance of hormones, we have it kind of preset that that's what happens as part of the program. And then again, it's six months and then another six months, unless there are other issues and the doctor asks to retest. But it's good to know where your hormone levels are after starting treatment. We know where they are at baseline. And then during treatment in the first uh, six weeks, they'll probably change again. And we've seen some people who the, the levels uh, can, can change. We asked or, or through the doctor asked that they measure them on trough. Uh, which would be the lowest you know, point either from the application. So if they're applying twice a day, usually uh, between 11 and 12 hours is a good time frame to catch it or injections, you know, if it's every three days, every five days on that third, fifth or seventh day is always a good to get that trough level on the injection as well. And then we can compare. Um, and I think the reason for the testing early on uh, is just, you can kind of sometimes match any side effects or issues they have. Uh, to, to see if the, the treatment is, is working and where, where it falls on that trough. So, yeah, it's, it's important. Okay. Danny? Um... My, I, I, my views are similar to Mike's and different to Mike's, and it depends on the perspective. Um, I'll give you an example. I'm a big proponent of, and this is just because I was taught, guys, this is not just personal opinion, I was taught this, just increasing your dose until your symptoms have resolved. Um, Dr. Nichols told me a, an analogy once. He says, and imagine we're all on a deserted island and we had all the testosterone in the world. What would we do? Well, we would increase the dose till the symptoms were resolved. And so, okay, just you know, take this much, that resolves your symptoms, great, and we're done. Um, He wouldn't be doing bloods. He wouldn't be doing all this stuff. He just, this is take the minimum amount. And when your symptoms are gone, that's where you want to be. Bloods are typically going to be required by your physician to justify this treatment to begin with. So at whatever rate they want to, they want to do bloods. I mean, you know, do bloods. If you have a, a, a private practitioner that allows stuff to get a little higher because he understands it better, he might do bloods a little bit less because he's not quite as caught up with it. A, a general practitioner, who wants to keep everything in range, like some of the doctors I had, that everything had to be in a range and he had to attain a certain number. He's going to be wanting testing you all the time because he's just going to look at that piece of paper and like, okay, so your test is here and your estrogen's here and everything is here. Um, you know, in, in my case, I had bloods done for a given amount of time. There's a lot of the stuff that I tested that I just saw was were staying consistent. So I said, well, I'm not going to bother testing these like every six weeks. I might test them once a year at this point. Um, you know what? I think once you're feeling better, you can start backing that off, backing that off a bit. Um, but you typically, like like Mike was saying, you don't want it. You don't want to test. I don't believe testing prior to six weeks. Like whatever you're going to change, you got to realize that you're making a change to your body, and all the other supporting hormones are going to have to adjust and find that new normal, whatever that is. Uh, give that at least six weeks. Um, and the other thing too, like Mike, what you're talking about is the guys that do weekly injections. You say, well, we tell them to do their test the week, you know, the day before to what their trough is. You got to understand it from the, if they're doing weekly injections from the moment they've taken their, their shot uh, up until the point here to their next shot, any single part in this area that they would take a test, their levels would be drastically different. That's true. Um, you know, so we're testing really in the trough to say, okay, well, that's your lowest level. And that's going to be the level maybe that your doctor won't panic over because it's not high. And he might justify giving you more to make you feel better. But if your doctor was to measure over here and see how high you're actually getting when your peak is, you might say, oh, no, 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 we got to lower it. So it really well, all depends on the perspective. Yeah, and that's, that's right. Because everyone, if they want to feel like a superhero, they can, they can have it measured at, at the peak. But the, why put people through the expense when you know, you know it's, going to be, it's going to be at the highest point? You know, that's the same if it's thyroid medication or if it's testosterone or any medication. It's going to peak and it's going to trough. And so the, the, the point is, if you measure the trough, you, you know, you make sure someone's not getting too little. Uh, you're making sure that, the, um, you know, you, at least you can measure that and say, oh, actually, you know, maybe seven days is too much for you. Maybe it needs to be done more frequently. Maybe, it, you know, maybe the dose needs to be a little higher. Um, it, just, it just keeps people in the safety range. Um, and, and you're right, there is part of it is, is needed for the doctor to justify the treatment as well. 
and that kind of keeps uh, the requirements satisfied. But in, in general, uh, the, the, the trough level is very important. Um, or just a measurement at that point, the six-week point is important. And when you measure it, um, it just needs to be put in context. So if someone does go and get a, a mid-to-peak or, or you know, in between uh, when the injection is, it just needs to be put in context so that uh, the doctor understands and can, and can make a, a, an analysis from that. What do you think, Sam? I mean, obviously we have like the, yeah, I mean, obviously like the, uh, I think it's uh, in the same way we say it was nice for patient or for TRT. I mean, you know, if you're not a thyroid patient because things are looking good, but you know, at the six month year, whatever the, the sort of frequency your doctor's doing, if that's monitored, you know, and, and mate, you know, the, like you say, if, if symptoms then arise, I don't think it's that the doctors will go, Oh, that thyroid panel is looking a bit off. Let's, you know, to give you treatment. Obviously, if the symptoms arise, like you say, you're treating symptoms, but at least then there might be, again, if there's a, a record of pattern of like a, a TSH going up, you know, and, 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 and T4, T3 or whatever going down and, um, or, or, or any sort of, you know, mix of pattern of that, then that's, that's quite good to know. I mean, we've had guys who, um, you know, who have had, um, thyroid issues picked up along the way, but also the, you know, the more comprehensive testing that's done, you know, the doctor likes to keep an eye on, um, you know, the other parts, you know, the kidney liver function, things like that, that is quite reassuring for patients as well. Uh, you know, I suppose as, as well as the doctor, just as a general health thing, not necessarily because TRT is going to affect it negatively or anything like that. I mean, mm -hmm. we've had guys that have, you know, had Hashimoto's. We talk about Mike, you know, we've got guys who've had antibodies, you know, tested and, and on a couple of their tests, you know, antibodies weren't apparent because they're not always apparent with Hashimoto's. You know, you, if, if your immune system is currently not, not, you know, not, not, not in that position where it's showing in the blood. I mean, as the disease progresses, I believe the actual antibodies can, can be less and less anyway, but you know, I've had guys that have picked up on that. And then there was advice, you know, like Mike was given. Interestingly, I have the same thing. It's in my family anyway. I've got a really nice family history of it. Um, but, you know, it was then lifestyle, you know, it was things like, you know, uh, really dairy gluten are really important for you to cut out, you know, because, you know, this is a, this is something that is commonly sort of, you know, aggravating, triggering in, in sort of Hashimoto. So I think the other testing outside of obviously the stuff we're talking about, TRT, um, seems helpful as well, I think. That's something I can run them through as well at, the, at uh, six months, but it can be brought forward uh, into three months or even earlier, so... I'm finding a lot, uh, just talking about these blood levels, is there's some guys that are just obsessed with the numbers. Um, if they haven't had labs for a few weeks, they're saying, well, maybe my, my E2 is getting out of control, or maybe my testosterone's here, or maybe my SHB. And it's like, they're, it's keeping them up at night because they don't know what their number is, okay? And then they finally get their labs and they're all excited. And then they look at their numbers and now they start obsessing what their numbers actually are. How come my test is only here? And why is my... How can my SHBG should be here and, and this should be here and that should be here. And I just like, oh, guys, how do you feel? Do you feel good? I feel good. I don't care what my numbers are. I feel good. <laughs> you know what I mean, at the end of the day, if you're going to just obsess over these numbers over and over and over and every six weeks have new numbers obsessed with, I, you know, yeah. I, are you feeling no, good? I, Your symptoms are all gone? You're all we gone. see that a lot too. I mean, we, we have conversations with, with the clients, doctors, patients, you know, every day, you know, all the time. And, and, you, and you get that a lot, especially if, I think there's an anxiety between those who are low for so long, then they get the level, and especially when it's tested on, on trough day, and they say, oh, is that all, all it is? I'm like, yeah, but we can test you two days later, and it'll be a lot, lot higher. So, yeah, yeah we, we see, too, that, that there is somewhat of an obsession with the numbers. And, and yes, you're right, Danny, that it's good to just go by how you feel, go by the symptoms. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's good to also have – how the numbers would be able to explain that and, and help help them understand that it's not just that number. That's just a small snapshot in time. It's very dynamic what's going on and it won't always be at that particular number. Um, and like I said, for vanity, we can always test you at peak. It's, yeah. It's um, not always needed as long as you're feeling good. I think Danny said earlier, sorry, sorry, mate. Um, I think Danny said earlier, you know, the, the other factors in life that may cause anxiety, you know, work, all these other things going on. And, and if, if someone's experiencing anxiety at any one point, the, the one thing that helps quell that anxiety is control, isn't it? So if you're like, well, if I can find a reason why I'm feeling like this, you know, and I was, I was completely in that and, you know, whoever experiences anxiety, we all do. That's often something we're looking 
before. It's like, oh, I've got a cracking headache. Like, what could that be? I'm dehydrated. Great. I'll have some water. You know, it's a big sort of, um, you know, it's, a, it's something that really eases that situation. And, and bloods, I think, are this seem to be this thing where if, you, if you're feeling, let's just say you've had a terrible stressful week or, or there's something, you know, anxiety creeps in when there's other factors that you're not really aware of that you're stressed about. And then it, then it comes to the forefront. It's really, really, you know, uh, it's common, isn't it, to someone to go, oh, why am I feeling anxious? Could it be that, you know, the classic one, could it be my estrogen's low or high or whatever? And, or is my testosterone too low? And, and that's why I think it's because it's a new, it's a new thing usually in someone's life that has factors that are, you know, movable and changeable, you know, like the volume on the, you know, on, on the sort of sound systems and stuff. It's, it, it seems to be an attractive thing for people to, to try and gain that control over of, to sort of give an, a reason why they might be feeling one of these other symptoms. I find that, I so, think that's the case. Sometimes it's, it's really just the expectations. It's, and I see this all the time, the expectations that some of these people have, but I think that they're just led to believe that, Oh, my testosterone was low. Now I'm going to get on TRT and I'm going to feel amazing and everything's amazing. And my life is amazing. And I, and I have sex like a porn star and I have sex with my wife five times a day. And, and I'm putting on muscle and I'm shredded and look at me. And, and then, you know, they get on the TRT and they've been on it for a couple of months and they're like, I don't feel like that at all. Like, I feel good. I feel a lot better than I did, but I don't feel like that. So am I doing it wrong? Maybe I'm not taking enough. Maybe mm. I need the AI and maybe this, and maybe that, because their, their expectations are that they're going to be here. And the reality is, you know, they're started here and they're going to get here. And that's, that's what TRT is. It's way better than you were. But this whole, like, I'm going to be a porn star and I'm going to be like, no, it's just, you're going to have your bad days. You're going to have nights that you don't sleep. You're going to have days that you're tired. And it's like, I've been really tired the last couple of days. Why is that? Maybe it's my, maybe it's my protocol. Maybe I need more tea. No, you're tired because you worked and you're tired because you went to the gym and you're sore and you're, and you're, your, your head hurts because your kid's been screaming for the last two hours and TRT is not yeah. going to fix this stuff, you know? So if you're uh, going to base everything on the numbers, you're just wasting it. Yeah, I mean, you still get sick. Yeah. You still get, I'm oh, sorry, Sam. Uh, That's right. I, I was just going to say, you know, there's that, there is that very much like the pre TRT and there's often like a time where you find out you've got low levels, for example, and then there's maybe a little slump before things actually get done about it. And then you go through the process and I think like, I don't know, there's that initial response isn't there in trt as well where you're going from like what you were to these changes as well it's like having a coffee weirdly that's the only an analogy i can sort of if you're mm -hmm. if you're you know refueling with that sort of you know that that drug that sort of has that effect and it takes you from a, a low level to feeling energetic again that whole experience is quite like you know it's astounding it feels awesome because you're very close to the time before where you were feeling that bad and now you're experiencing this it's very easy to relate to six weeks ago, eight weeks ago to how bad you were feeling. And now, exactly. you know, that, that change has happened. So I think the, the longer you go on, the more you maybe forget and the less you, you sort of reflect on how you once were. And I have to do that sometimes. Like you said, Danny, I'm knackered. Like what's, what's going on? Uh, you know, is there something going on here? Uh, it happens in my brain, like a little bit of the back of the brain, mm -hmm. the years down the line, but it's like, well, no, I've like, just not slept right for like two weeks. And, and it, we, we talk about forums where it's a place to like, you know, talk about your experience and, and, you know, let's just say erectile dysfunction is something that has literally traumatized you for years. And it is awful. It can cause PTSD. It can cause learned helplessness and, you know, in the bedroom, all those sorts of things. And then suddenly it changes. The, those people that you can use a forum will come out and be like, this is awesome. They might say something like I'm shagging like a porn star because you know, it's so important to them. It's that, that specific symptom that yeah. has really changed their life. And then, then everyone looks at all of this cumulative sort of set of symptom, symptom relief that's happened. And they're like, wow, that's going to happen for me. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe erections were sort of okay. You know, maybe, maybe they've got a reasonably good level of, of sort of, you know, uh, performance, for example, and consistency with that. But they're like, well, I'm going to be, maybe that's like normal, you know, maybe that's a, a good level. They're like, oh, I'm going to be like right up here you know, superhuman, yeah. you know, I, th I think that's where sometimes it gets cross communication. I, I hear that a, yeah, sorry, a ton. It's like, you know, I, a guy saying, you know, I feel great, but maybe I could be feeling better. You feel great. Do you have any issues? Yeah. He goes, no, I got no issues, but maybe I could be feeling better. Well, what's better exactly? If you've got no issues, what's better? That stuff kind of drives me nuts. But, I, I feel so, that when you're, when you're uh, optimized and you understand this stuff correctly, you're going to give yourself your dose. Like I, I dose daily. I give myself my dose in my morning and I go up on my merry way and I don't even think about it. It's an afterthought. 
I give myself my dose like I'm putting on my deodorant. I don't think about all day, should I have put more deodorant or less? And maybe I'm, I should change the deodorant. Maybe I should apply it vertically instead of horizontally. Or maybe, no, I just apply it and I'm done. And I don't think about it the rest of the day. It's the same thing with my TRT. But I, I think sometimes when, you know, especially for the, the newbies, let's call them, or the ones that are just starting on it, um, there, there's this adjustment phase. And so, of course, it's top of mind. And for some of us more experienced, and I've been on it for 23 years, you're right, I don't think about it at all. And the hope is that, the, that when you first start, that you eventually get there. Some people can get there sooner than others. But um, you know, eventually you do get to that point where you're not uh, thinking about it. And um, and just to the point that Sam made, um, you know, I, I've been a little bit poorly this week, a little bit of a man cold, and um, you know, things don't always work exactly as, as you like. And um, but you know, oh, okay, I've got a cold, I'm not feeling great. You know, my body wants to heal and recover rather than you know do other things. Sex drive isn't as great. So um, I think with experience, you learn these things, and then you just learn to get on with it, and and things start coming back in place. Absolutely. Yeah. But you guys get just to everyone watching, you got to draw the line at one point where you say, I don't have any issues left. That's it. You're optimized. Yeah. Don't expect like, well, what do I do to feel better? That's it. That's you're, you're good. That's you've attained what you're needed to attain and stop breaking your head and stop losing sleep over numbers. You're, you're good. Just keep doing that. Exactly. Okay, uh, one last question uh, that we prepared and then some questions from the Q&A. If men starting on TRT do not have uh, any children yet, is it always recommended to have some uh, sperm frozen for later? Or can you be pretty sure that uh, conceiving children will still be possible by using HCG afterwards or um, other things later in their journey? So uh, what's uh, your opinion, uh, Mike? Well, you know, for me, my personal journey was I am... Um, I never really wanted children, but it was always nice to know if I could have them. And so I started on TRT and HCG wasn't really a thought. Uh, later on, probably about three years ago, after many years of, of no HCG at all, I thought, well, what, what's all this noise about HCG about? Let me let me give it a go. And, and I tried it, 500 IU, three times a week um, for about um, about six months to 10 months. And then I got a sperm, a sperm count just to see because I never had it done before. Um, it's an interesting experience if you've ever gone and given a sample, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a little frustrating trying to do it. Uh, um, not that anyone's watching you, but you know, you've got like limited time anyway, and, and no stimulation. When the you, missus um, is waiting for you in the waiting room, that's really good. Okay, babe, I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm going to go, uh, you know, yeah, so you, 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 know, you provide the sample and, uh, then you get the result back, you know, uh, probably about a week later. And, you know, I found out, you know, after years and years of just TRT, really no HCG, uh, about 156 million sperm, 72% motility. I think that's, that's pretty decent, not looking to use it. Um, but, you know, for me, that was like, oh, if I wanted to have children, I could. Um, it's good to know that with years and years of, of you know, of testosterone exogenously being used, plus a varicocele, doesn't help the sperm count either. Um, I still have enough to get the job done should, should I need it. Now, um, if it was something that really concerned me and I wasn't sure, or if I didn't know, um, you know, there could have been something else wrong with my testes when I was younger uh, and just started TRT without knowing what my baseline sperm count was, um, it's, it's hard to know if I would have been able to bring it back because I, I wouldn't know the baseline level. Um, so what I'm saying is if someone's really, really concerned, and this is something very, very important to them, you know, of course you should look at all options, um, you know, preserving a sperm, freezing it, um, it isn't a bad idea. It's an expensive idea, though. Um, but if you if you've got the means or the desire, and it's something that's important to you, you know you, you could take that measure. Um, we can't I can't promise you that you'll have the same result that I've I've had. And we've seen clients that, um, in in particular, more clients who've been on anabolic steroids and used a lot of them to the point of abuse. Uh, I, I've seen that they're the ones that have the hardest time in general uh, getting their sperm count back up to a decent amount enough to do even IVF. And, and so for them, sometimes they have to do like a special extraction um, or, or get a donor sperm. So, you know, if these cases are going to cause distress, then, then yeah, by all means, you know, it's something that you can look into. But it's not normally the standard um, because, you know, many studies have shown that you can bring it back. And even when the it's studies that have used testosterone, along with even progesterone as, um, as a contraceptive, uh, they... Uh, they found that uh, when they stopped these these treatments, then the sperm count came back for everyone without any PCT at all. 
Um, what they didn't say in the study was how high did it come back? They just said it came back to the level that was needed for fertility, and that was around 20 million sperm. So, and again, my story was I was up to 156 million sperm. So I had more than enough to, to reach that threshold. But it's not to say that if you had 150 million sperm before you started, uh, no one can really say what you'd have after. But in that study, everyone in the study, after two to three years, got the sperm count back to at least 20 million. So I don't know, at the end of the day, I'd say, you've got to do what's, what's right for you and what's going to give you the most peace of mind. That's just my opinion. Danny? Uh, well, you know me, I, I, I did you know, TRT for three years and I tried every dose imaginable. And then my wife, uh, I got remarried, like I said, in 2017. And uh, she wanted to have a kid. And I hopped on the HCG and 500, for me, 500 IU twice a week. Got the job done. Um, from everything I'm reading, 500 IU every other day is what's deemed uh, if you really want to do it properly. There's even some people that needed more than that. There's doctors in the group that have stated that they will use whatever dose required to get it up. So 500 IU every other day isn't doing it. They'll jack up that dose to even more until it's going up. I haven't heard of anybody so far that said I was on TRT for the longest time and I've been on HCG for two years and I can't get my wife pregnant because my, my sperm count is next to nil. I haven't seen that. Um, did I feel good on HCG? No, I felt like dog shit on HCG. I, I, I hated HCG. I hated everything about the way it made me feel. There's a select few guys that say they feel better on it. I always wonder from these guys if they would have just increased their testosterone dose to get the boost that the HCG gave them, would have gotten the same thing. Um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't heard of anyone so far like yeah I tried the HCG and just nothing. It's like that's pretty, uh, it's pretty rare. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah, if you want to, like Mike was saying, you have the means and the energy to, you know, go forget your sperm frozen. You know, you can go do that. Uh, it's gonna take out a lot of the fun of trying when you're on your own, uh, TRT because <laughs> when you're optimized and you're gonna try to have a kid, that's fun. That's uh, that's a lot of fun. Someone well, asked in the chat box, excuse me, do you guys continue with your TRT and add HCG or stop TRT for that period and, uh, and add it? I would, uh, I would. Uh, go ahead, Michael. Uh, I, I, I still use HCG and it's um, just a small dose, so about 250 twice a week. And I'm not looking for fertility. I just, uh, just I don't know, it just makes feel, things feel a little bit better. Not, not much. It's probably very subjective. Um, I've also gone, like I said, many, many years without HCG it just seems to be the treatment that I'm on now. Um, so it's, uh, but as I was saying, get, getting back to the convenience for some people, you know, Dan is right. Most of the, the ones that have come through the, the service, I, I've seen the sperm counts and they have all gone up. Even the ones that had um, started much lower, maybe had, you know, been abusing steroids in the past, had, had, but some of them who had the most abuse, uh, like Trenbolin and these other things that they used illicitly in the past, they um, they seem to have the worst outcomes as far as getting to that 20 million range. Um, so, but everyone that's tried HCG that just was a simply TRT, normal TRT, never did heavy doses of steroids in the past, they they all seem to, to call and say, oh yeah, I got the nurses pregnant. And it's like, well done. So so yeah, it, it can I be. That. I agree. That's just, I've seen the same thing. Yeah. Like I say, it's usually only the guys that have, taken those really strong like suppressive you know androgens and not you know not done anything with regards to hcg along the way um you know i mean i take 250 ius twice a week i actually don't feel any different with it or without it i'm just sort of doing it for the uh for, i don't know the peace of mind to uh um maybe maybe comfort my partner as well but um you know i've been without it you know get a bit of atrophy not too bothered by it makes the penis look bigger absolutely fine so um you and know your partner's does, ever said really honey your balls were amazing last night right <laughs> yeah yeah all, all my penis <laughs> 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 but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's um yeah I, I'll, I'll probably i'll probably stop it you know after after I've, I've had kids and you know as like i said i don't really feel any different so okay yeah, guys you you can just just answer the question fast. If you're on TRT, you're not want to have kids right away. You're not obsessed with the size of your balls. I wouldn't bother. You're just adding one more thing to the mix that you got to optimize and, and dial in, whatever. Uh, if you've been on TRT for a while, you haven't done anything crazy before, you want to get your sperm count up, you can get on HCG temporarily, get your sperm count up, 
you know, get get her done, like they say in the U.S. And then as soon as it's done, do what I did. I get the hell off that stuff because I felt so much better with. And like I said, for guys that, uh, out there that are saying that they feel better with HCG with or without, you know, well, check out what are your free T levels now and your total T levels compared to when you weren't on HCG. Obviously, they're going to be higher. What if you just jacked up your testosterone dose to match those same levels? Would you feel the same? Uh, some part of me feels like you would. So, Sam, we, we were talking about this earlier. You know, we've come across a few clients that um, and there was a study from ABMG that they presented. Um, some people are complaining of issues with almost mobility, movement of their legs, um, being able to get out of bed. And um, they were on just testosterone on its own. But when they added an HCG, they, they said they had some improvements. They could actually walk and, and move around. And I found that interesting from just a couple of patients. And then when Sam told me about the study that he saw at AMMG, I thought it was, um, you know, there might be a subset of people that it may, may benefit. Sam, do you remember any of the, the details? Uh, like, we, to be fair, like, we, were, we were just, you know, spitballing. It was just that we, I think we saw something to do with how HCG locally infected in, uh, injected into a, um, like a spinal cord injury had, had benefits of like healing. Um, and we weirdly, we, we just, it's just two guys, I think, Mike, that weirdly just had real fatigue, like the yeah. leg, like really strange leg immobility. And then when they started HCG, that improved. And I like Danny said, I don't know whether that same thing would have happened if they just upped the testosterone yeah. dose, but it was, you know, it was an indirect thing. They didn't do it for their legs. It was for, for fertility reasons, but, but notice that, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like I say, um, HCG, it's it's a, it's a strange one. I mean, obviously, like Danny said, there are some guys that say they definitely feel better. You know, um, I've had guys that have tried up in their dose, tried lowering their dose, but definitely just feel better with it. Is it placebo? I don't know, because, you know, some people say they feel better. Again, if they've read lots of things about people improving once, I've seen that plenty of times. Guys, you've got to add HCG to your product school. You know, I, I've added it in and I feel amazing. And it just, you know, it flows through to all of these different people reading these things. But um, yeah, I'm, I mean, you know, I'm not sure how much we know about sort of the, the long term use of HCG, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the way that we do. So maybe more interesting stuff will come out, you know, in future about its use. But um, yeah. One guy in our group made an argument once. And he says, is it plausible to think that we kind of know that estrogen gets spiked when you take HCG? And it's just, is it possible that some of these people feel better because maybe they just had low levels of estrogen and by adding the, 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 the HCG, it brought their estrogen levels high enough where they felt better. Is it possible? Like, I think it's possible. It, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like a crazy idea. Is it true or not? Who the hell knows? I'd have to probably yeah. look that up, but you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, uh, just two questions from the chat box uh, and then we'll wrap it up. First one, um, as cannabis is believed to be a stepping stone to harder drugs, is TRT in the same manner a stepping stone or gateway to the use of uh, anabolic uh, androgenic steroids? Uh, what's your opinion, uh, Mike? Ever heard of guys that first started on TRT and then went to uh, steroids? Uh, I heard of guys... Usually there are people that had tried anabolic steroids in the past and, and um, so then they go to the TRT route. Um, I mean, look, I suppose, um, you know, anabolic steroids are uh, the ones that are medically approved for certain uses like cachexia, um, you know, obviously have, have their place in medicine, even though they're used a lot, lot less. And some of the original anabolic steroids were used, you know, for you know, women like Mastron was used for women that had breast cancer, but not really used anymore in, the, in that regard. So, no, I, I don't think TRT is a gateway drug. That's kind of silly. But um, sorry, I don't mean to offend anyone else. The question. Uh, no, I, I don't think it is. Um, because what happens is you're assuming that somehow taking testosterone is like taking some sort of hard drug when you're just replacing what your body doesn't have enough of or optimizing it even to, to a higher level. And, and you really don't need to add anabolic steroids in because they're all targeting the androgen receptor. So how much, how much more do you need that your testosterone isn't, isn't providing? Of course, so no, I, I don't think it is a, a gateway drug. Okay, thank I'm not you. Much of a, a, I'm not much of a drinker. I'll have a drink time to time with some friends. And do I enjoy that kind of little buzz that I get sometimes? Yeah, of course. But just because I enjoy that little buzz doesn't mean that now I got to go drink and drink and drink all the time and I have to have the craziest buzz ever. No, but that's me. Um, I, am I optim do I feel optimized on what I'm doing now? Yes. Am I satisfied with what I'm doing now? Yes. There's some guys that smoke 
or just to say that I don't feel like I need to now go start loading up on the D balls uh, every day or lo start loading me up myself up with tons, huge levels of anabolics. There's guys that do, um, you know, cannabis and they smoke cannabis because it makes them feel good. And they're like, Hey, I, it, it takes the edge off the stress. You know, I've got some pain. It makes it go away. Um, you know, I, I have a good laugh with my friends when I'm on it, whatever it is. And for them, that's, that's enough. That's, that's really all they need. It really depends on the, on the personality of the person. Some people will take cannabis like, Oh my God, this is great. Well, what if I try cocaine? What if I try heroin? And now they got to go try and try and, you know, with the TRT I stuff could be the same. I got optimized on TRT. Well, now I need to, I got to try more and they need that, that next new rush, that next new cool feeling. And they just can never be satisfied with what they had. Um, it's going to really depend on who's taking it. I'm just not that type. You guys are probably not that type, but there's going to be the type that just is never satisfied and needs that adrenaline rush of trying some new yeah. crazy thing. Well, that comes back to the same point as always trying to be even more optimized, uh, expecting more than um, yeah, than, than what you got uh, really. Okay, um, one last question. I don't really understand what the person means in the chat box, but what is the difference between free tea direct and free tea? I don't know. Do you know uh, what he's talking about? I wonder, whether it's, I, I, I wonder whether it's to do with one of the, the, the testing methods. Obviously, there are a few ways of testing free testosterone, obviously the calculated free testosterone, and then there are, there are oh, a few okay. others. I think Mike might know the name of them. Yeah. The, more, some of them are more inaccurate. I think one Yeah, so some of the assays that could depend on the different lab and they give you a slightly different result, you know, similar to when people are doing the high sensitivity estradiol test versus uh, the other assays like the radioamino assay. But um, I, that's what I think they mean. The calculated free testosterone tends to be the one that's used in all the peer-reviewed papers and literature. I think it's, it gives you better standard because, you know, wherever you go, you can get the albumin, the testosterone, the SHBG, and then they calculate the uh, free tea. And I think that's an adequate way to, to do it. Um, but if you get a, a, just a direct free testosterone assay, you know, it, it might show you too high, too low. It's not giving you the right, because there could be artifacts that are tied into that uh, free testosterone assay. It's not quite been perfected yet. So that's what well, I think the free or the direct are the same. And it basically means not a calculated one, if my memory serves me. I know that in our group, the, the, the docs tend to use, contrary to what Mike is saying, they, they tend to use the free tea. Uh, I don't think they use, they want to use the calculated one. I'm going to have to ask why, because I don't have the answer for that one. Why is it that they prefer one, that one over the other? I think you can, you can compare the direct assay with, uh, with the calculated free. I, I, it, I my imagine it, it's a bit cheaper not to have to run the SHPG and, it's, and not to have to run the other bits. Um, when you do direct assay, I know, and also some labs don't like having to do the calculation, even though they can just run it through a program. So from what I've discovered, um, like one of the labs that we're using, they never wanted to do the calculation for free tea. They just said, oh, do this free tea assay or direct tea. Um, but that's, you know, that's just, I guess, the, the preference of the doctor. I know our doctors here are very happy. Um, and that's pretty much the standard here is the calculated free tea. Okay, guys, uh, we're at the one hour mark, uh, probably. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for your time. Maybe Mike and Sam, um, you can tell the viewers in uh, Europe uh, where they can reach you if they want to work with you guys, with your doctors, of course. Go on, Sam, you want to tell them? Or... Yeah, I mean, you can, we have our website, you know, www.balancemyhormones.co.uk. Um, you can access the website, you can, you can access on chat or, or drop us a message or just ring the main number. You can get through to one of our members of staff that can help you. Obviously, we're on Facebook. Um, you know, we've got the, the, the TOT page and HOT page that, 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 that you guys are sort of uh, are using, but you come through Facebook if you need to. Uh, also, we, we, we've launched a new, a new website. So um, on the website, if someone's very curious to know where the testosterone levels are, you know, we spoke about that tonight, they can order directly from the site. There's various different test uh, panels there, and uh, they can just order directly even when we're not open. So um, they can go visit the site at balanceforhormones.co.uk. Okay, thank you, guys. Danny, anything more to say? How can people reach you? Because I know you want to spend your time for free helping out other guys. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any type of uh, question, you want to just shoot me a message, just look me up on Facebook if you'd like. Danny Bossa, uh, B-O-S-S-A, probably says it on the 
video thing here. You'll just see a picture of me and my wife. Shoot me off a message there. Be more than happy to, to, to answer. Um, and like Stephen was saying, the uh, Facebook group is awesome. Lots of doctors, completely free. No one's trying to sell you anything. No salesman will visit your home. You know, it's uh, completely free and everybody's just exchanging uh, literature and research and studies. Lots of doctors there. It's a great place to be. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Um, Danny, Mike, Sam, for your time. And talk to you later, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Danny. All right. Bye. Take care, Bye -bye, guys. guys. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.